welcome to the Coming Strength and Fitness podcast. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to the Coming Strength and Fitness podcast. I think this is episode 76. Um, I'm Alex, if we have not met, I'm your host, and I got two lovely guests in the studio today, and we're going to be talking all things the Boltons, David and Mandy Bolton. Mandy, how are you doing today? Ooh, I'm good. Just You're finished great. a workout, so. <laughs> yep. I think that's a, a common thing that we'll do here is we'll get someone to do a workout and then come talk as they're exhausted and fatigued. See how good your mental clarity is here. Yep. David, you just worked out. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. What was the workout, David? It was a lot of up downs and a lot of goblet squats followed by back squats. It was heavy back squats. Well, <laughs> <laughs> should have been heavy back squats. Um, well, guys, I'm super excited to talk. I think the value here is just kind of getting to hear your guys' perspective on why you've been at CSNF so much and how it's impacted you guys and your family and your personal health and all that stuff. And it's cool because, Mandy, you're taking a, a different role here at CSNF as well. Do you uh, want to kind of give us a quick 30-second thing of what you're doing here? I, <laughs> I am here to help in whatever way. But I, I just, love that. I am a person that loves spreadsheets and organization. So I will be helping with all things that will just the, all the back back end stuff that will make things run smoothly. So if you're part of the CSNF community, you're probably going to get some emails or things from Mandy. She's going to be running ship because that's what we need. And that's something that my mind doesn't naturally gravitate towards. And she's already making this place so much better. So I'm super excited to have Mandy's skill sets here. Um, why don't you guys really quick share a little bit about your about both of you, your family, your marriage, just you guys in general for a minute or two, just so that people can understand you better. And then we can kind of get into the CSNF part and health and all that stuff. But let us know who you guys are first. Yeah. So we've been in the coming area for 15 years or so. I don't know. We've been married for 13 and that's when we moved here. So 13. Well, I, moved, <laughs> I moved here before yeah. we got married. Either way. Yeah. Got married in 2010. So it's 2024 now. Yep. We met at the University of Georgia. So um, that uh, David's originally from Tennessee. I grew up in Cartersville, Georgia. So then we moved to Athens for school and that's where we met and then dated all through college. Um, I went to nursing school and he got a degree in business economics and then started sales work but we got married after after all of the schooling and all of that and then that's when we moved up here mm -hmm. um, you're a pediatric intensive care nurse mm -hmm. and then we started having kids we have four kids two girls two boys and uh, between the ages of five and eleven mm -hmm. so we've been we're getting pretty serious <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, awesome man. yeah um and what do you guys do now I uh, I do a little bit of real estate investing. I've also got a biotech company that we focus on regenerative medicine in the veterinary field. Okay. So things to regrow tissues, corneas, muscles, ligaments, things like that. Cool. Mandy? I, um, so like David said, I was a pediatric intensive care unit nurse um, until I had Layla. So then I stayed home for a period of time um, through three kids, um, which that is a season where the... <laughs> days move like molasses but then you look back and the years are just gone so um I'm but there then, right now I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> you are in it uh-huh um and so then um but so I was staying at home and then I was also volunteering at our church and so that led to a text message one day that said hey would you ever be interested in working here and I was like oh I don't know but I'll have the conversation but anyway so that started I, I joined the preschool team at at Brownsbridge Church and then have been there since 2017 and now um am on the elementary team but um either way so i work at brown's bridge church and cool. here and here <laughs> um i love that quick little synopsis so what ultimately brought you guys here to the gym how did i know one of you started before the other mm -hmm. person came later like what were you doing before csnf for health wise give us like how that whole story intersected got it yeah so i think i've been here for about four years just over four years and uh, we've we've talked about the word seasons in a little bit, but we've gone through a lot of different seasons with young kids and things. So Mandy was doing her own thing in between pregnancies, and then after we had all of our kids um, with burn boot camp. Is that what? No, Fit Body. Yep, Fit Body. Um, either way, so I came here. I'd actually I'd been active all my life, but through working at corporate, I used to work in corporate and doing my own stuff now. Um, stopped being as active, definitely did not go to the gym at all. Um, 
really foreign to the, I did not understand or know any of the lifts. All the terminology was foreign to me. Uh, and <clears throat> I remember I was like, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. And Mandy goes, well, just because, just because you're skinny or have a good weight does not mean you're healthy. Whoa. Uh, and, yeah. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's good. All right. Keep going. And she was killing it. Like she's, <laughs> she's very healthy. And so I, I walked into CSNF and, uh, How'd you hear this place? I Googled it. Uh, one of my kids was going to preschool here at the church just yeah, down the right road. Yeah, down the road. And uh, so this was the closest gym. So I'd drop them off at school and then come to the 930 with the other moms. Yep. And uh, and from there, just learned everything everything I know. And what, hey. y- what year was that? I don't know. That would have been, I mean, twenty four four years, years ago. ago. 20... 19, 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Ish? 2019. Yeah. It definitely would have been 2019. Yep. Okay. Before 2020. Jo- Jordan was my coach, and he was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mandy, how did you and when did you eventually come? I, so just really rewinding, I grew up very active through my childhood and really involved in lots of different sports. Um, so it was very active all the way through high school where it was like very structured depending on what activity I was doing. So then you get to college and it's kind of like, that's the first time that you're doing something on your own and you're having to figure that out. So, um, I did, I, I ran some, I would go to like the it's called Ramsey, but you know, where they have equipment and all of that. And so did that through college, but then, um, and the activity has just always been a part of my life. But then once I started having kids, um, which just from a personal standpoint, I had a miscarriage before Layla. And so then when I got pregnant with Layla, I was so afraid to do anything because I just didn't want to make, I I was so afraid that that would happen again. Um, and so I literally stopped, I stopped, a lot of activity and really through all four kids was did not really do much at all Mm. um and which we all of our kids are born fairly close together so even when you think about it I mean anybody that has had a child knows it's just a I mean a there's the pregnancy but then afterwards you don't feel like yourself for a while um and so and then we would just get pregnant (laughs) have another one and go through the process again so I remember distinctly that when I was pregnant with Griff who's our youngest that I just, I would say, we knew, we knew that he was going to be our last one. And I just said, I'm just ready to feel like myself again. Mm. And so as soon as he, I mean, well, I guess not as soon, but at, he was born in April and by that winter time. So, you know, it takes, it takes a few months, but by that winter time, I was ready to jump back in. So then that's when I started going to not here. I was at another gym and that was such a, for me, uh, like, my mind needed that it was just yeah. a recentering in a lot of different ways um and so this was before david had started um working out anywhere so that's kind of what he was yeah. talking about so and i think just probably through that was i don't know you would have to speak for that but that that led him to want to to make a change in his life and that's kind of why he then started coming to csnf which was all like he said very logistics based i mean mm-hmm. so it's funny to look back because that decision was truly just like a Hey, it looks cool, but logistically that would be easy and it can work with our schedule because he could, he could do the drop off and come to the 930. So it's super funny to look back at that choice and then be like, okay, now all the things that have changed since then, Mm -hmm. as far as what has brought me to here, um, I was like, no, he would always be like, you should come. You should come. Absolutely not. (laughs) I was like, that's intimidating to me. I didn't understand it. I would be like, what do you mean that you did a 10 minute workout? That makes no sense. Or <laughs> and so I went a five minute. I mean, I would give him a hard time all the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but honestly, so during COVID where everything was shut down and he was able to rent some equipment and bring it to our house, mm-hmm. then we kind of did a hybrid of what my workouts were like and his workouts were like. And it helped me see, okay, well, okay. there's a little bit yeah. of difference here. And because of that, then obviously my gym membership had changed at that time. And so, um, I mean, it took a little bit of time, but after that, once everything re- started reopening, I finally was like, okay, let's do it. And then I think that both of us just realized how much during that time we loved working out and doing activity together. So yeah. that was probably the yeah. main driver of me coming here was yeah. Yeah. to where we could be together it's been so good yeah. for our marriage just mm-hmm. to have something outside of the kids that mm-hmm. we share yeah. and do. Yeah. yeah i can relate to that for sure so mandy i want to kick it back to you because let's say someone's listening that are fans or friends or acquaintances of the boltons but they don't come to see a sniff and they're like wait a five or ten minute workout like i don't even <laughs> understand either you were there before what would you tell them now on the other side like no hey this actually works and you i mean you've been here for several years now like what's the difference and what why does this work yeah I, well, 
a from the how how everything is structured even and he would say that he's like well you do the strength and skill first where you're working on a lift and then you do that but in my mind the only thing that I really thought of as quote air quotes working out would have been the workout portion right and so I right. it's like this it was a very um I mean, now I just realized how intentional the structure is and how it all builds on each other. But no, mm. I'm like those, it, I love the variety because yeah. I mean, no matter what it's, yeah. it's helping you be a better, like well-rounded as opposed sure. to just a single sure. cardio focus or anything like that. And not, I mean, they act I, I'm a huge find something that allows you to move right. and you, whatever works for you. And I think right. that that's the main focus, but I've just really, really loved being here and it's yeah. just a totally different um, David, you add, add, add anything to that? No, I think she covered it. <laughs> so in general, basically, for if someone's listening and they're like, I still don't understand. There is a learning curve that comes mm-hmm. to it. But essentially, like in the 60 minutes, you're not moving for the full 60 minutes. What we're doing is we're kind of getting every slice of the fitness pie. And that might be a 30-minute long workout or a 10-minute long workout, a 40-minute long workout or 20. And we're kind of varying it with also the movements, but also the intensity. And that's Mm -hmm. kind of where the secret sauce lays is it's not just you're going to go at a 7 out of 10 for 30, 45 minutes every single day, which is great. And you're training one domain or one aspect of fitness. But what happens when you need to sprint after a kid that goes um, goes into the road If we're not training that modality, we could pull something, hurt something, or we may not even have the capacity to do that versus we're going to do high interval outputs here where that's a big slice of the pie. Or we're going to do heavy weights because we want to have strength gains. So there's a lot of different – there's there's science behind it, but we're basically going to tackle every slice of the pie, and that might look like a quick five-minute workout. We do a long – I think of Saturday's workout. Tomorrow was a 40-minute time cap workout. So like you said, the variety piece Mm -hmm. is huge. Um, I want to kick it back to you guys before we kind of dig into some like specific parts of our conversation is if someone's listening that doesn't go to CSNF, how would you encourage them or why would you encourage them to even just come check it out or even like give this place a shot? My mind instantly jumps to multiple lanes. I could go a just from the physical health alone side that I mean, when your body feels good and is healthier than that just opens up doors in multiple I mean it just gives you freedom in multiple ways um also just from the community side I mean that would be something that has totally impacted and changed our lives with just good friends that you just like coming and being around the the people yeah and then I from the challenging side I just think it's good to keep doing things that challenge you and I think a lot of times as adults we want to stick to what we're comfortable in. And I feel like here I am constantly challenged in, in ways that I can control and modify and do whatever I need to do. But at the same Mm. time, continually being challenged to just keep, keep growing. And Mm. that's just a great aspect too. Yeah. I think, I think as adults, we can live in our comfort zone and never get out of it a lot of times. So we're, we're getting outside of our comfort zones daily and pushing ourselves daily and reminding ourselves that we can do hard things, which I think is important. You mm-hmm. know, but that, you know, being uncomfortable is one thing and being able to understand that and deal with that. But also just the environment here is very yeah. welcoming. Yeah, I didn't know anything about any of the lifts, any, any Olympic lifts, any of the terminology, CrossFit, anything. And just the way that you onboard, the way that we're taught. And even when we're, we've been here for a couple of years, the coaches continue to coach and, and help us with form and points of performance, all that kind of stuff. So and everybody's at it's it's a journey for everybody. Mm-hmm. It's not like anybody's expecting you to perform at a certain level. Right. It's, it's all about progress, not right. perfection. How have you guys personally benefited? Mandy, you were saying you found freedom in all areas, not just physically, but other mm-hmm. but how have you guys noticed changes or benefits or reached success or goals hit over the past two, three, four years? Being here, yes, from the workouts, but also the community. Like, what have you noticed before and after? Talk to that. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. So, I, I think one of the unexpected byproducts. I came here in here just to get in shape and mm. and just to move and challenge myself. But uh, I've really created some good friendships. And I was like, at first, I was like, oh, those would just be gym friends, and my actual friends that I hang out with are over here. But it's really kind of all those lines have been blurred over the years, and it's. You know, some of the best people are working out here in the gym, and it's it's amazing to come and do life with people every day. 
Yeah. And, and when you see the same people every day over and over, it really creates a, a unique relationship and bond. Yeah. What are you, Mandy? Yeah, I just I think that a lot of times people only come to gyms with that physical body. Um, I mean, that's just what they're yeah. coming for is that's the only thing that they're thinking about. But I have discovered more than anything that I am here a lot for my mind as well. When I, it is a part of my routine for me, I, I start my day here and it helps me go forward in my day. So that's why I'm like, the impact is everything. I'm like, it's my interactions with my, the people here is, is one thing. And then the, like going to work and my mind being ready for that. My, my patience with my kids, because I just feel better. I, right. it's, it's all of it. I'm like, the impact is it, it, seeps into every single thing that you're doing which actually transition us great into this next point i want to kind of unpack a little bit is mandy you've recently suffered an injury Mm -hmm. um well actually injury slash surgery (laughs) um and had a limitation and had to adjust there and we've had to you've had to been very intentional about still coming and doing what you can because you were limited in one area talk to us about what happened and how you kind of went about navigating that limitation, but it still didn't stop you from pursuing your health. Yeah. So, um, essentially I started having, honestly, not even in here. It was, um, and it's probably happened for years. So there was not a specific, um, thing that happened that I was like, okay, now and it's my knee, we're talking about my knee, but, um, but I would be at home and I would bend it and it would stay locked. And so this started happening more and more, which led me to be like, okay, I don't want to hurt something worse. You know, you just, so got it checked out. Initially, they thought that it was just going to, I mean, ha- went through the x-ray, then an MRI. So from all that, they thought that it was going to be a very simple clean out. And so I was told going into surgery that a sen- there's no specific recovery. Obviously, you'd be in a little bit of pain, but that I would be totally back to normal within, you know, two to four weeks, essentially. Um, and so that's what I went to sleep thinking. And then I woke up with and and I was in a fully locked brace so they found once they got in there that my meniscus was all sorts of shredded um and then so they had to take a piece of it out but also repair it because it was Mm. so the stitching is actually the complicated part of a of a meniscus repair but um because it was very very hypermobile which is probably what was happening it was getting stuck and that's why it was locking um so then I, I mean from that point forward they're like okay now you're in this locked brace so it was locked in extension um for six weeks so the brace for six weeks but then I, they were looking at me and it's like okay now it's about six months until you're and you're like I'm you know that's a lot to take in when you're yeah. first yeah when you when you're not expecting it and coming from this is such a routine integral part of my day so I think there was especially over those first few days just that part was just disappointing to me I think is probably the best word I mean obviously there's you're you're, you have a lot of emotions but I was just super disappointed but um I waited until I went to my two-week follow-up but I just and I remember I looked at him David came with me and I looked at him I was like just tell me what I would do that would hurt it I need to understand like what movement would right. hurt it? And so they talked about, which it was in the brace, very, very protected at this point. So no pivoting, like I shouldn't do any of that. Yeah, and I said, well, movements. can it? Yes, exactly. But you couldn't do a lot, but just twisting and things like that. So I said, okay, well, can I go and do upper body stuff? Like, and he was like, yeah, I do. I mean, yeah, you can do any of that stuff. Right. So it was right after that, that I started coming back. And I, I mean, it was that very first workout that I was like, Oh, this just I is like, it. yes. I mean, and going back to, like I've said, I'm like, I, it was really through those next couple weeks where it was very, very, I mean, I had to sit, I could, I would awkwardly, you know, stand and hobble over to something and pick something up. But I'm like, I just knew my body was moving and it just goes right back to what I was saying about my mind. Mm-hmm. I would leave, I would still feel refreshed. I could go like, I felt like my interactions were then healthier. And so that was just this discovering of oh this this is more than you know my body and the that side this is I mean how much it is for my mind has really really been impactful for me over these last I mean few months because this is very recent for me David how did you support your spouse in that season 
Yeah, I would uh, I would carry her skateboard in from the car. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one thing that I, so <laughs> for would, context. She would row. I would row, and this was Leighton. Uh, Leighton, it was his, his um Shout suggestion. out to old Coach Oh, Leighton. yes, always. So um, he said one of the coolest modifications that he's seen is that when you row, because, I mean, my leg was straight, so I obviously couldn't right. bend it. It's just you row, and you put your foot on a skateboard, and it just kind of rolls with you, and, yeah. it, and it did. It worked. <laughs> I That's was like, awesome. I would do that. I would put it on the peg of the bike and just bike with one leg i'm like you there is honestly so much more that you can do that you don't even think of because it's not yeah it is different movements than what we're doing but i was like there is so much that you can do it's infinitely modifiable yes and i would come in and i mean the coaches would be awesome about offering suggestions i would google stuff and look stuff up myself just to try to you'd be like okay what can I do a little bit different for there but I think honestly even if I hadn't done that I know that I could have walked in here and and I would have gotten help to figure out what to Mm -hmm. do yeah but it takes coming still like so I think that the I mean and initially it was like I I would come in here and be like what am I even gonna do you know and then but every single time I would do something and it would feel so great afterwards Mm -hmm. so I'm just like I I just what that would be my encouragement is just you can there's always yeah. something that can be done and i think the the approach or the mindset of my knee is hurt i need to rest my full body for the next six eight twelve mm-hmm. weeks that's part that's part of the issue of the people think they need to rest entirely where we've had two or three people suffer an injury recently and they're like hey i'm gonna put my membership on hold for two or three months and essentially just sit on my butts and do nothing where in reality that's probably not best because if we're moving our bodies, the other areas that are injured, it's actually going to help the injured spot because it's going to inc- in- continue to increase blood flow, produce those feel-good hormones, rush white blood cells to the site, and actually help versus, oh, no, I tweaked my Achilles, and I'm just going to sit on the sidelines for three months. So I love that you have felt success and you felt good modifying but still coming back and doing what you could do because that's the mindset – Entirely, like if your right wrist is hurting, you still have a left one and we still can do dumbbells over barbell or we can do single arm work or lower body work or core work. Like all those parts are still moving and grooving, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, the last part I kind of want to like transition and talk about, which I think could be very relatable to many people listening, is how you guys do this with everything going on. Um, I think I call David the most interesting man in the world. He's like the Dosa Keys uh, commercial <laughs> guy that there's always there's always new fun things that you learn about uh, David Bolton um, that you guys have a lot going on as far as like you do this, you've done this, you have four kids, you have businesses, part time church, volunteering, all of this. First and foremost, not how, but let's talk about why first. Why do you guys con- continue to pursue your health both here and in other areas with so much going on yeah i mean it's all it's all integrated Mm -hmm. you know it's um you know we're given this body to steward and we're trying to steward it well uh, and and it also bleeds off into every other aspect of our lives as far as energy levels with the kids being able to be active with the kids my my original motivation was so uh to come to the gym was so when my kids get older and they ask me to go climb a mountain with them or if I'm visiting visiting them when they have kids or something like that and there's there's a 5k that somebody dropped out of I can go run it with them stuff right. like that I can just right. I can just do whatever I want to do with them there's not a limitation there so um just being fully present both physically and mentally and spiritually with with the family is really one of the driving forces okay and physical has a lot to do with that Mandy? yeah I mean I just think that I know it, it, that's how we typically think about different areas of our life of this is my, this is my, I'm going to go and work on my physical health. And then now, you know, here's my nutrition piece. And then here's my, um, you know, my, my spiritual piece and my emotional piece or whatever that is. But I'm like, but really we're all just us. Like it's, we are, are it's all together. And so that's what I'm like. I mean, I think all of us could relate to those times that, you you go and you eat eat junk all day and then you feel like sure. junk too you know i mean and sometimes it's just it's just for fun and you just want three pieces of cake i've been there but then but then i feel it you know and then but that that would be my why is just that i want to be the healthiest version of me in all of the areas that i can be yeah and then i mean obviously our kids are a huge 
focus mm-hmm. that I want to be and do the best that I can with them. We all know, I, I mean, any parent could relate to the fact that it's it's just, that's a, that's a journey of trial and error <laughs> and sure. success and mostly failure. But at the same time, you're just your why is that it's it's to raise them to be you know and to give that good example to them too yeah yeah so that's your why what about let's ask the what before the how what are some of those main things that you guys do both in the gym and outside of the gym that you guys feel get the biggest return on your investment in pursuit of your health oh man that's a big question Mm -hmm. so I, i think that you know our priorities as a family is you know our, our relationship, our faith is, mm-hmm. is number one. And then our marriage, you know, our marriage is more important than our kids. Mm-hmm. A- and then our kids, our kids know that too. So, <laughs> um, so we do things like date night. We do like a quarterly overnight. We, we try to continue to date each other and remember why we fell in love. <laughs> right. So, um, and, and then obviously parenting the kids and all that, and then health, um, you said nutrition and, yeah, and, I'm like- and physical we are, I mean, this is coming to the gym. I mean, we're very much the 7.30. I joke all the time. I'm like, 7.30 is my time. I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm not a very, very early morning person. So, yes, that could potentially be another option, but it's not sustainable for me. A, sure. a 5 a.m. class for me is not sustainable. But, so 7.30 is like, just, it is it is the routine of our day. Setting you know? your day so, up well. Yes, it literally is just like that's the flow of the day. The kids mm-hmm. get on the bus and then we come here and then we go to work. Um, yeah. And I think, so. I think it's important. And then community kind of wraps everything around. So we're, we're doing all aspects of life in community as much as we can. So. But then those what they I, we are very routine oriented of mm-hmm. our of our days of the things that we do. Um, just to try to provide that structure. I think that it's easier when you kind of know what to expect or you're trying to work towards something to be moving in a clear direction. Okay. So last question is how do you do this then? Because you guys have a lot of moving parts. I have a lot of moving parts and probably 99% of the people listening have so many things they're trying to juggle. And one of the most common reasons people say, Oh, I can't do that is time. I just Mm -hmm. don't have time. I'm too, I don't have time. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. How do you guys overcome that hurdle and prioritize yourself? How do you do it? Yeah, we all have the same amount of time, right? And uh, we try to say that I don't have time. Instead, I like to say, try to say it's not my priority. And mm-hmm. it kind of brings it brings it down a little bit. So instead of telling your kids that you don't have time to do something with them, like, well, it's not my priority right now. And it kind of shifts your mind. Yeah, you're like, oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah like, that's, whoa, that's whoa, what you're communicating. What am I sure. prioritizing here? Um, and uh, real practically, Mandy and I, every Sunday we meet and have a meeting about our next week. Right. And the way she's wired, that really helps her mm-hmm. knowing exactly where the kids are going to be, who's going to be dropping them off, who's going to be picking them up. Right. Are we having a date night? And we ask two questions at the end of that session every Sunday is, how can I love you well uh, uh, physically and how can I love you well emotionally? Yeah. And we ask each other those questions. Does that, does that involve the skateboard? Like yeah. physically <laughs> yeah. taking a if skateboard to <laughs> yes, yeah. the car? And, and we had to pay for that advice in marriage counseling. Yeah. So yeah, you guys get that for free. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's, it's really all about priority because we all have the same amount of time. Okay. So you have to sit down and figure out what you want to prioritize, and that's what you're going to fill your time with. So essentially what you're saying is your health is a priority. Mm-hmm. Yes. That you are going to – for example, that old school analogy of like you're going to put the big rocks in first yeah. and then the little rocks go around it and then everything else is just going to filter through if it makes it. But you're going to put the most important things in your calendar yeah. initially and then that's it. Yeah. Mandy, and, what else? I mean, like I said, it's it's literally like we have worked it into the routine of all of our, you know, it is, it is the expectation. It is not the um, afterthought. Uh, so, I mean, the yeah. expectation is that we will be here during the week, you know, weekends are, it depends, you know, that that's where there's a little bit more flexibility depending on what's going yeah. on. But for the week, it's like, no, we, I mean, this is our, this is the expectation for our days. I will say though, this has been both from a, um, obviously you don't, you don't just arrive to a place where you have four kids, two job, multiple jobs, you know, and yeah. all of these things you've, we've, we have been growing to this point and mm-hmm. have, worked hard at the same time to get to this point of where we've functioned well as a team we have had yeah. I mean we have I mean I could I could transfer and that could be a whole nother talk on on that of 
the struggles that it takes to get there and essentially name those priorities and yeah. realize, mm. okay, what do we want together? And, and there have been plenty of times that we, me and David, weren't on the same page and talk about bleeding over into multiple areas. That's where it, when you're, when you're not working as a team, but um, now, I mean, that would probably be another thing that I would say is like the biggest priority is just that we want to work together as a team. So that from a very practical standpoint, the, the m- weekly meeting helps me know we are both on the same page, both from a logistical standpoint and he knows my heart, he knows what's on my mind, he, you know, all of those things to where it's like, okay, now, now we see where each other are as we're working through our week, but, yeah. but both from the physical health side and each other side and friendship side and relationship side and spiritual growth side, I'm like, you, I, I think that you've got to, I mean, we do, we just, those are our priorities. So you have to, we put it into our calendar because for us mm-hmm. in this quote unquote season. season of life, we are, are really following a calendar because yeah, our yeah. time, our time is, we fill our time with what we want to fill. Exactly. It with I, 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 I yeah. like uh, I like thinking of our time as in John Mark Comer talks about this a lot and Dallas Willard is uh, not we're very very busy we are very busy but we try not to be in a hurry and there's a big right. difference in that when we get in a hurry we become impatient we we're real snappy with our kids and things like that but if we give ourselves enough margin if yes we have a lot on the schedule we can get to it all and logistically yeah. and, and not be in a hurry and we're just I'm a better dad, I'm a better husband, I'm a better person when I'm not hurried. Yeah, and I've always said I don't mind a full schedule. Like yeah. a full schedule doesn't bother me. If anything, I, I think that I <laughs> kind of oddly thrive in that <laughs> of all the moving pieces. But I also really just want that organization and to, and mm-hmm. to just be on the same page. Yep. And so I think that that's, that's where we are right now is just really feeling like we're in a great place of working as a team now there's I always feel like there's the need to put the disclaimer that that does not mean that it works perfectly every day but no just trying (laughs) so a couple main things I'm I'm kind of catching from what you guys are saying is one pursuing health in a busy season one is it's a priority it's Mm got to be a priority it's not an afterthought it's the expectation of no like hey this is a a big bucket item that I'm going to schedule in Two is you guys are on the same page. So there's a communication element of like, mm-hmm. hey, just not even your weekly meetings of like, hey, here's the other areas I need, but also 730 is on the calendar. So mm-hmm. the scheduling piece as well. Mm-hmm. So there's the priority, there's the communication, there's the scheduling piece, and then actually following through and doing it. But I think what's unique with you guys is you do it together. Mm-hmm. You guys are on the same team and it's both a priority for you. Has that always been the case? Or how? what would you tell someone listening that is married or does have a spouse or whatever that they're like, ah, I just, I'm just not on the same page with my spouse. How would you encourage them? Yeah. So, I mean, we've, we've walked through where we're not been on the same page in a couple of big ways, uh, all the way to the point of parenting our first and our first kid, Layla. But, uh, it's really difficult to feel like you're alone in what you're, you're doing. And what I, what, what we did is, um, you know, you have to lead yourself well. And you have to do the next right thing, right? And sometimes that's all we can do is take the next step. And so whatever that is. And so I think as, as a spouse, we get, we get a front row seat and to see what, what's happening in each other's lives. And if Mandy's leading herself well, taking care of herself, working out, and I'm seeing that, I'm like, hey, I want a little bit of that. Tell yeah. me more about that. Yeah. And that's going to that's gonna draw me into that. So it's not necessarily pestering or badgering or telling them sure, what to do or what sure. they should do, but it's leading out of example. A I lot like of times. that. I like that. Essentially, you have your slice of the pie. Mandy has her slice of the pie. And instead of you holding her accountable to her slice of the pie, you own your slice of the pie. And when we both do that together, then we can move forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mandy? I, yeah. I, I mean, my initial thought is no, like 100%. We have not all, it's not always right. been this way. And we have had times where we've just been, you know, on different ships trying to but trying to steer in the same way and it just uh, it's just harder honestly it's just and well to to the point like it's not stuff that we can figure out on our own all the time we've had to go get help and and that's why we say we're surrounded with community friends right people that can speak into our lives we've we've done marriage counseling to figure Mm -hmm. things out and it's been the best things that we've ever done but i think what's cool about a conversation like this 
is this isn't like a Hallmark movie where there's a happy ending and everything's great. It's like, this is real that we have gone through struggle. It's easy to listen to, for example, a married couple that has four kids that have been working now that is experiencing great goals. Be like, oh man, I'm not there or I'm not David or yeah. Mandy. Mm-hmm. But you guys didn't just overnight no. join here a week ago and be like, oh my gosh, look at me. It's like, you've had to go through the struggle. And that's just the reality of human nature of like, there is pain and there is hardship and struggle. And it's through kind of like what you were saying, David, is through that discomfort and through that hard is when we actually do become more on the same oh, team, yeah. stronger, healthier, yep. fitter. But I think it's easier to not go through that when we bump up against the struggle to just go the other way and be like, ah, cross was too hard. Marriage counseling is too hard. Uh, financial budget's too hard. So I'm just going to go spend. I'm just going to go mm-hmm. willy nilly my relationship. I'm not going to go to the gym because it's so much easier to. Mm-hmm. But on the other side of that is probably not what you want. But ultimately, like we were talking about in every area, when you go through that struggle and actually learn through it and grow through it and pray through it and pursue, you're going to find like freedom on the other side, but you have to go through part of that struggle. So I'm just encouraging people listening, like, Hey, you may be in that season right now. It might be figuring it out. You might be like, ah, I've tried and I failed a trial and error multiple times, but just keep going because it might be close. It might be a couple weeks, but you have to go through it to actually get and overcome it. So David, Mandy, I appreciate your time. Is there any last minute thoughts or fun takeaways or encouragement you would give to someone listening right now before I kind of end with some fun questions oh man (laughs) I feel like that's like I want to say something so inspiring (laughs) honestly I would just say just take just take the step just take a step because the I mean if you have if you know where you want to be going so a I guess that would be step one would be just kind of kind of just have that vision of where you want to who you want to be where you want to go and then just take one small step towards Mm -hmm. it Cause I'm like, it's, it's that, that those steps over time is what leads to the, to the change. Yeah. When it, when something's overwhelming, uh, whether it's relationship or something, a goal or anything, just whatever that next one step. right thing is, just make that one right decision. Hmm. That's good. And then from there you can make the next one. Yeah. Okay. We're going to end with lightning round fun. <laughs> this or that's Pepsi or Coke type questions. And you have to give me your gut reaction. Okay. I'm just going to shoot from the hip and you just got to blurt it right out. Okay. Um, cookies or ice cream? Ice, ice cream. cream. Um, nonfiction or fiction? Fiction. Nonfiction. Morning or evening? Evening. Evening. Flying or driving? Flying. Driving. Paperback book or digital version? Paperback. Paperback. Um, running or rowing? Running. Running. <laughs> We've done so so much machine work. (laughs) Traumatized. (laughs) Um, Mexican or Italian? Mexican. Mexican. Um, Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Coke. Burn or drown? Oh. (laughs) (laughs) You both have the same reaction. Burn. Drown. (laughs) Wow. Well, if I'm drowning, it'll put you out. Drown. Burn. That's terrible. (laughs) Both of them are terrible. $1,000 monthly or $12,000 annually? 1000 monthly. Yeah, 1000 monthly. Thing. Yeah, net present value. 12 kids or zero kids? 12. 12. <laughs> um, can only wear one color for the rest of your life or wear the same outfit for the rest of your life? Color. One color. And last question is... Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Really? Yes. Wow, you both said that right away. Oh, yeah. We align on the important things. (laughs) (laughs) David, Manny, this has been fun. This has been encouraging and inspiring and just so practical and helpful. I appreciate your time and your influence here. Manny, I'm so grateful for all you're doing here at the gym as well. Um, And I just appreciate both of you. Thanks for being on this episode and coming to Fitness. We will see you on the next one. Until then, you guys are legends. See ya.